y'all. What's going on? So I'm off on one of my little uh, adventures, last minute adventures. So the opportunity arose late yesterday to head on down to Kentucky and uh, drop in at Buffalo Trace Distillery to do a tour this morning. And I was just down there a week ago with the wife. We did a different tour, had a good time. Picked up some great bottles, had a great weekend. <laughs> so I'll, I wanted to get down and uh, do some more. I didn't think it would be this soon, but the opportunity arose. I was able to grab a tour reservation. For this Monday morning, I had the day off, so why not? It's a cold, snowy uh, March morning here in Ohio, 26 degrees. And just decided to hit the road couldn't get to anybody to per se go with me I grabbed a reservation for two so one of my good friends that lives down in Kentucky is gonna meet up with me take the tour with me and hang out a little bit this morning but uh, it was about a four-hour drive down to uh, Frankfurt from where I live it's uh, now 430 been up for about an hour now uh, just rolling into Columbus still got a little over three hours to go <clears throat> but the plan for today and tomorrow is I do have the 10 a.m. tour reservation for the Trace tour which is their standard production tour at Buffalo Trace uh, obviously grab the allocated bottles that are available today it should either be an Eagle Rare or a Blanton's Day either of those would be great uh, then after the tour, I stay fairly well to my friend. He goes about his day. I will be heading into uh, Lexington and uh, through some other towns, just checking out some of the bigger liquor stores, see what the availability is. Uh, let's get some store picks, a couple other bottles I'd like to pick up. But uh, that's it for today. I do have a cheap hotel booked in Georgetown tonight, which is about 20 minutes away from Buffalo Trace. And the reason I want to stay that close to Buffalo Trace is because I'm hoping to get on a hard hat tour tomorrow morning. Uh, it's just going to be me, so I think the odds are pretty decent. They might be able to squeeze me into a tour just being a single occupant. So, fingers crossed on that. And then also I'll pick up any allocated bottle that is available tomorrow morning. But that is it. Like I said, I am on the road. Got a few hour drive, got a coffee in hand. Um, I got plenty of time to stop, grab some breakfast. Uh, the plan is to meet up with my friend at 8.30. Their gates open at 8, 8 o'clock down there. If you don't know how it works. Um, the gates open an hour before their visitor center opens. You get in the parking lot, people lined up so they can get their allocated bottles. Um, check in at nine, hit the gift shop. Buy, uh, buy what you want to buy and then uh, get on our tour at 10 o'clock so that is the plan um, and I'll keep you updated as we go so we're rolling into Columbus now and we'll see you here in a little bit Continue on I-71 South for one and a half miles. on I-71 South for 20 miles.
quarter mile, turn right onto Great Buffalo Trace. Take the next right onto Great Buffalo Trace. In a quarter mile, you will arrive at your destination. Alright, we are here. Parking lot has not opened yet. A little early. I'm a little early, but that's fine. I stopped and got some breakfast. And I'll just sit here and eat my breakfast. They should be getting ready to open the parking lot soon. The parking lot usually opens at 8. The visitor center opens at 9. My tour is at 10. I just wanted to make sure I got here in plenty of time. So. Please watch your step. The floor is very slick this morning. Yep. But no, I. <laughs> he brought that I, yeah, I did. I did. It's all my fault.
set us up for lots of success. Prohibition's repeal, we're already in business, and uh, we undergo a, a, a bit of an expansion. We went from 14 buildings, 1933, to 114 buildings by 1952. Uh, we're actually a national historic landmark, the reason being is for the architecture of the buildings and whatnot. 10 o'clock tour? Yep. Okay. So they had uh, the migrate east, and they migrate back west, and they were done that for literally thousands of years, so they created the trails, which were called Buffalo Traces. So that's where our name came from. Uh, Sazerac Corporation purchased this 1992. It's an American company out in New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, uh, they rebranded us Buffalo Trace 1999. Everything in it, but uh, being a national historic landmark, we, we can't throw buildings down. So they got around that. Uh, railroad tracks used to go in front of those buildings, came around the corner, and this road would have been a railroad bed. So, uh, well, in here, it used to be a crane uh, depot.
What causes bourbon to mature? A, a big thing is temperature change. When it gets warm, the bourbon warms up, it passes through the chart into the wood, and then when it cools down, the opposite happens. A little bourbon pulls out. So afternoon bourbon in, nighttime bourbon out, and uh, you do that day little dance for you know, a number of years. Now. Uh, they might notice that. Now you'd probably have more problems with the attorneys than you would with the security forces. How often are they running straight from the barrel? Uh, every day. Oh. Uh, Monday through Friday, sometimes on Saturdays. Oh, okay. Uh, two shifts. But here, instead of uh, opening all those barrels up at once, they dump one barrel at a <coughs> time. There's a grill on the other side of the steps or stairs there. Uh, they drill the bung out, they turn the barrel, uh, quarter turn, they get a little sample. Uh, they're going to test the proof. They do that in here. Uh, there's a table over there. You can see a half mine over there that's been tested. It's going to be tested. Uh, they put that whiskey straw in it. They turn the barrel. Uh, bourbon comes out. They go the across there. Same process as there, which is a trough a lot smaller. They spray the char out. Then it goes to the powder bats. They put the floor in there. There they chill it. Uh, they're going to proof it. Yesterday, I was going to do some filming walking around the uh, the gift shop some more or around the grounds, but I wanted to get rolling and be able to check out some things in town, uh, some, mainly some stores and stuff, and uh, visit with my friend for a few minutes that joined, it, <coughs> joined me for the tour yesterday. Uh, we don't get to see each other that much, so we just did a quick visit. So anyway, what uh, yesterday concluded with was... I went into Lexington, made my way toward Lexington from Buffalo Trace, and checked out all the liquor stores. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, I probably went to 30 different liquor stores yesterday. Pretty much just found one on the edge of town after I left Buffalo Trace, leaving out of Frankfurt, found one on the edge of Lexington. It was a Kroger's. Went to that one, came, you know, looked around, came out, looked at uh, GPS, got on Google Maps, found another one, and just kept doing that all day long. So, like I said, probably visited 30 different liquor stores, probably six or eight different Kroger stores, uh, three or four of the liquor barn stores, two of the big ones, two of the small ones, the two big total wine stores, and some small, like, I guess what I call neighborhood or mom and pop type stores. So what I discovered is, once you visit one or two of the Kroger's, you've seen them all. I was like, maybe maybe a random Kroger's will have something different, but 99.9% .9 of the stuff that's there is all gonna be the same from one Kroger's to the next. 
Um, also, what I found out is, um, well, let me let me just go through what the other stores had. As far as the liquor barns and the uh, Total Wine go, uh, obviously way more variety, way more inventory, but you're not going to find per se on the hard to find stuff. You're not going to find barrel proofs. You're not going to find any of the stuff that people really seek after. Now, if you're from out of town, you're from out of state, and you don't frequent these stores all the time, yeah, go to one. Go go to one of the bigger ones, like the liquor barn. Go to the big one. Total uh, Total Wine and Spirits. Go to the one of the big ones. Yeah, definitely go to them, because they have stuff I've never seen before. It, it, I'm not going to say it's bad stuff, because I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm at the point where I'm looking for what I'm looking for, and... Um, you know, stuff like that is going to be secondary on my list later on in this um, in this journey, this adventure deal I have. So um, those stores, those big box stores, Liquor's Barn and uh, Total Wine, they're really proud of their their house brands. I mean, there's huge displays of those, and you know, I'm sure they're fine products. But for the sake of what it is, I'm not paying. 30 to 60 dollars for a bottle of a house brand when there's 30 to 60 dollar name brand bottles I have not purchased yet so that's that's where I'm at with those um, from what I understand it was on a Monday that I that I yesterday was a Monday and from what I understand from the guy at uh, I think it was total wine sorry they're all kind of mixing at this point um, Monday's a terrible day to search for anything I guess they get midweek deliveries and probably Monday Tuesday are probably, you know, by the time the visitors and the tourists and the weekend crowds have gone through, all all, all of anything they may have gotten in the previous week is gone. So, word to the wise, I'd say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday are probably the worst days to go. Uh, early Wednesday, Thursdays are probably your best days. Fridays and Saturdays, you might get lucky and still find things that are sitting on the shelf. So, it's kind of what I learned in Lexington yesterday. Um, you're getting to the um, neighborhood stores or the mom and pop stores as I call them. I think the ones in Lexington, unless there's some niche they have, you know, like if it's called like a bourbon house or something like that, I, which I didn't go to the, that one I see labeled that. Or if it's like one that is known for carrying stuff, I'd say don't waste your time with the neighborhood stores. They're more of what I call brown bag carry special stores. They're, they're, they really specialize in like the smalls, the cheaps, daily drinkers, you know, stuff that, you know, the locals would walk into their local liquor store and buy on a daily or on a weekly. I found nothing in those stores. I did talk to a nice gentleman. Again, I don't remember the name of the store because I went to so many yesterday. I talked to a nice gentleman. He talked about the told me about the struggles of how they can't get anything. Um, he was actually joking with me about how um, uh, Benchmark, the old number eight Benchmark, the, the bottom shelf Benchmark is the one everybody wants down there. And the locals want, and he can't even get that. And he said that when he gets it, it's, you know, $16, $17 a bottle. That's why everybody wants it. I kind of joked with him. I was like, well, this, that stuff's on the shelf every day up in Ohio, and it's like $9, $10 a bottle. He acted like he was surprised to hear that. Um, if you want the, the other benchmark line, a lot of stores do have that, even your Kroger's and stuff, so no problems finding that. That's why I say, if you come down here into Lexington, go to the one of the big stores, go to a couple Kroger's, but don't spend all day traveling, traversing across the entire town like I did. And I didn't mind, I didn't have nothing better to do. So it was, it was still kind of fun. Lexington is kind of a, a different city. It almost seems like it's a bunch of little cities all compact into one. They have a bunch of little uh, housing areas and, you know, several different uh, shopping centers. Smaller shopping centers, not massive ones like your big cities have. Um, then I want to get to what, where I did find some stuff, which was surprising. I go, I, I stayed in Georgetown last night. I stayed in a little microtel, a nice little hotel. Stay there. I mean, it's small rooms, inexpensive. It's a $50 room for me on this particular evening. Um, so I headed back up to Georgetown and I was just continuing stopping at stores. 
and lo to my surprise, Georgetown had the goods. Um, I first stopped at a uh, horse park uh, spirits. That's actually where I, I, I pulled in to get gas in my truck and the gas station had a little attached um, yeah, um, liquor store. So I go in and I start looking on the shelf and one of the things that's been on my list is uh, Bardstown Origin Series, the bottled and bond, the black label. I have the, black, I have the white label, but I, I could never find the black label. And there it was on the shelf. I think it was $48.99 or something like that. It was basically retail. So I was able to nab that, uh, look behind the counter, and he had some allocated stuff. I mean, he had Buffalo Trace. And that's, this is kind of annoying. As soon as you walk in and start looking at bourbon, all these stores want to say, oh, do you want Buffalo Trace? And I get it. A lot of people are looking for that. But I have plenty of Buffalo Trace at home. I don't need any more. So um, he asked me that. And I said, no, no, I don't need any of that. And uh, he had some Blantons. Um, I think he had $1.99 on his. Not, I'm not going to pay that, even if I did want it. Uh, he had some bookers. A friend of mine's looking for a bookers. He had 149 on that. No thanks. Um, and he had a Willet Purple Top. Asked how much that was. And he said $3.99. And while I still won't pay that for that bottle, I didn't think that price was terrible. I've seen them online for 5 to 6 So $3.99 for a Willet Purple Top. You know, pay it and walk out the door with it in your hand. That wasn't terrible. Nice guy, though. So I, I got the Bardstown, and then I went up to uh, uh, the Kroger's there in Bardstown, or sorry, not Bardstown, um, in Georgetown, and they had Buffalo Trace on the shelf, and you know, Kroger's is going to be your retail, I think it was $26 or something like that, maybe $27. Um, and then I looked over in their, their rare cabinets, and they actually had um, some Elijah Craig barrel proof. Uh, it was A1. Two one, no, that's I don't remember. I don't remember which batch it was. I have it. I bought it. Um, I wasn't sure about that that uh, batch. I had to go out in my truck and watch a video, a couple videos, because I know there is a couple batches that people aren't fond of. So anyway, I went on my truck. I watched it. I went in and uh, went back in and bought it. I don't know what's going on with this traffic today? Oh, there's a school bus. Is what I'm getting right now. School bus line. So, um, sorry, squirrel got distracted. I bought uh, I bought that at the at the Kroger's. So now I'm kind of surprised by what I found at the last two liquor stores. So I was honestly going to stop at that Kroger's and just stop because I was looking for Kentucky Spirit, and I knew Kroger's carried it down here, and I just wanted to see if that store had it. But now I'm surprised, so I stop at a couple other stores on the way through downtown Georgetown. Uh, small stores, one of them was in a house. It was kind of weird, it's like walking up somebody's stoop, walking into the living room. But it was a liquor store when I walked in. Uh, they didn't have anything, a couple other stores didn't have anything. I did come across uh, one, um, <laughs> the guy had a back room with a private collection. I don't want to go into the legalities of what I think that was, but I asked it. The sign said they're not for sale, but they were for sale. And his prices were ridiculous because I asked him if he had a Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. That was one thing I was looking for, too. <clears throat> and he's like, oh, yeah, I got one. I go in the back room and the sign says not for sale. He's like, oh, they're for sale. We just have to say they're not for sale. So it's not about private collection, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to ask any questions on that. I, I can about assume what's going on there. I mean, I think it's a secondary market, private sale. I, I wasn't paying his prices anyway, but he had everything. He had, like, every Weller, uh, Elmer T. Lee. He had a Pappy's. He had a couple Willets. He had all the Elijah Craig's, all the Larsenies. Yeah, they were all in that back room. Um, you can reach out to me, and I'll private message you if you want to know where that is, if you're interested in those rare finds. And I'll, I'll turn you on to that, that place, but I'm not going to publicly post it. Um, then I went over to a couple stores that I hit the weekend before, um, just on the edge of the freeway. And I walk in, and right there is the uh, Kentucky Spirit sitting on the, on the uh, front counter. Um, 
one I've been looking for all day. That's why I bounced around all the Krogers. And it was actually a store pick. I paid an extra $10 for the store pick, but that's that's fine. It was there. He had two bottles sitting on the counter. For those that don't know, it's a wild turkey Kentucky spirit. You can only buy it in Kentucky. That's its thing. It's a single barrel. Wild turkey single barrel. Only buy it in Kentucky. So I've been looking for it. So I got that, and then I went across the way to this other liquor store. Um, I think it's called Bluegrass Liquor Box or something like that. And they had some Elijah Craig barrel proofs, Larsen barrel proofs, um, a couple other things. I don't remember what they were. But all, all those stores had some Buffalo Trace also. So I didn't need none of that. But then, yeah, that was it. Uh, then I headed back to my hotel. So those are all in Georgetown. Once I left Lexington, the big city, got into Georgetown, that's where I found quite a few finds. So that's where I would recommend if you're gonna stay in the area, get a, get out of Lexington. Go, go to a couple box stores, like I said, the big ones, and then get out of Lexington. Um, that's it, so today's agenda is I did get my tour, my second tour at uh, Buffalo Trace, the hard hat tour. Wonderful people in their customer service squeezed me into a tour this morning. Absolutely check, get on the waiting list. Get on, um, give them a call, give them an email and saying that hey, you're coming in town and this is the tour you want. They've been wonderful about squeezing me into tours on the last couple of visits down here. So I got a hard hat tour. It's the, of the three tours they currently offer, I know they have some different summer tours coming up. But the three tours that current offers is the last one I haven't done. So I came down with my wife and we did the old Taylor tour. That's a history tour. Yesterday I did the uh, trace tour with my buddy. That's more or less the bottling, production bottling tour. And then today I'm doing the hard hat tour, which I think goes over the, uh, the new expansion area and the still house and fermentation rooms and stuff. So it's like a mid production. Um, tour yesterday was kind of a pro pro production post production bottling type tour today is like mid production tour so that's it for now i'm going to record some clips on the tour rolling into frankfurt as we speak around the top of the hill now there's the uh frankfurt city limit sign um it's eight o'clock gates should be open I did get my bottle of Blanton's yesterday. I'm not sure if I covered that. Yesterday was a Blanton's today. That makes today should be an Eagle Rare day by the um, by the prediction website. <clears throat> I just hope it's not E.H. Taylor or Weller. If it's E.H. Taylor, I cannot buy one because I'm not within 90 days of buying my other one. And if it's Weller, I just don't care to have it. I mean, they only do Weller Special Reserves at the distillery, which I think is crazy. You think they'd do an antique or something, but Special Reserve is usually what they have. Unless they pull some kind of surprise on people and have something different, but that hasn't been the trend. So that's it, guys. Um, until I get here, and uh, it's gonna cover it. I might try to do a little recording of getting in the line and stuff today. The line wasn't too terrible yesterday. I took some clips of that, but didn't go into detail. Um, I was probably 100 deep. I was up at the check-in by quarter after 9 once they started cycling people through. And they ran out of Blanton's at 10 o'clock. And they ran out of Buffalo Trace at 1 o'clock. So yesterday was a pretty thin day on their inventory. But, all right. I'll get off here. Current situation. School zone. We'll get here and uh, get some footage of the next tour.